If you're a normal person, then you probably use big websites like YouTube, Reddit, Twitter every single day, but you might know that there are some issues with big websites like this. First off, these websites do not respect your privacy at all. They collect your personal data and sell it to advertisers, which is really creepy and you may not want them collecting all this personal information about you. That is very commonplace now and almost all big websites do something like this. But even if you don't care so much about your privacy, you probably know that big websites these days are just really poorly written. Like let's just take Reddit for an example. So if we reload the page here, we can see just how much data needs to be transferred just to load this simple page, which should just be text. And so just to load this simple page, we are having to download four megabytes of data and it is still going. When will it stop? Nobody knows. And so just to load a simple page like this, it takes a long time to load and that can be really annoying. Of course, it's going to be very slow and sluggish. And you probably know that some sites even lock you out if you don't sign up for an account. So if you try to go to Reddit on mobile, then you'll get locked out if you even try to just scroll down a little bit. And they want you to either sign up for an account or download their app. And maybe you don't want to. I'm sure you've seen the same thing for websites like Twitter, where you have to create an account to actually view somebody's tweets. It's really annoying and you might not want to do that. And so what if there was a way to fix all of these problems at once? If only, well, there is, there is something called alternate front ends for these websites. So just as an example, let's take an alternate front end for Reddit, libreddit. And you might see that I'm getting all the exact same content that you would see on Reddit, but I'm not on Reddit. I'm on libreddit. And what these front ends do is they kind of proxy the content from Reddit to a custom front end like this. So you can still get all of the same content that you would expect just on a completely different website. And so these custom front ends are all going to be open source. And so they're going to be much more privacy respecting than the big websites. So you're not downloading a bunch of creepy tracker scripts and you're also not downloading that much at all. So if we reload this page and compare it to the official Reddit page, which Reddit had to download something like five megabytes of data just to load a basic text page and libreddit only has to download 376 kilobytes. So that is much better. It's going to load much faster probably. And you don't have to sign up for an account in order to see all the content. And so this is just an example for Reddit, but there are front ends for all different kinds of websites. I'll show you in this video. And there are a couple of downsides. One of them is that you can't post here. You can only browse here. So if you wanted to say, create a new post in the subreddit or comment on something or comment on a YouTube video, you can't do that. You can only browse and read other people's posts. So that is one downside, but I know that 99% of you aren't going to comment on this video. You're just lurkers and that's totally fine. Thank you for watching my videos, but most people don't even comment or post anything, myself included on most websites. So if you just want to browse some of these websites, that is more than enough. And so you might notice that I am on libreddit.net, but I won't be leaving a link to this in the description because these instances are open source. And what that means is that basically anybody can install this onto their own web server and basically create the same thing. And so instead of just having one website where you can go to, there are a whole bunch of different instances they're called where you can get the exact same experience. So if I were to go to libreddit.cavin.rocks, that would take you to the same thing. It's just on a different web server. And so the most popular instances are near the top, but let's say that you live in the US, you would probably want to use an instance that is near you and not something that is halfway across the world. So you can come into the instances and find an instance that is close to you geographically, and that will probably load faster for you. You can also compare maybe some other features, like this one is safe for work only, that's pretty based. And so for each of these front ends, I will leave a link to a table of all of the instances for them. And then you can just pick your favorite because even if I recommend one, there is a chance that it might be down or it might be gone in the future. And in that case, you can just come here and find another one. But let's start off the list with YouTube, since you're probably watching this from YouTube right now. And a front end that you might want to try is Invidious. You may have heard of this before. It is actually very popular. 
but you can watch all of your favorite videos from here. You can search for your favorite YouTuber, click through here. You can watch all of my videos and those will all work fine. So you can play it here. You can even browse all the comments and you can even get some recommendations here on the side. And what's more is you can even create an account. So there will be a button here where you can log in or register. And once you have an account, you can subscribe to channels and then you can have a subscriptions page while the same as YouTube. So you can still subscribe to all your favorite channels and do all this straight from the web browser, but without YouTube tracking your every move. So I really like this. There are even some preferences here where you can change some settings. It actually gives you a lot more control than YouTube. So just the UI, you might prefer this to YouTube. And as a bonus, you don't get the endless recommendations feed on your homepage. So you probably can't waste too much time on here. You can still get recommendations, but only on specific videos. For your homepage, you're just going to get the popular or trending or your subscriptions. So another popular YouTube front end is Piped. And this is almost the same as Invidious, but there are a few small differences that maybe you'll prefer. You can check out the preferences and they have a few small settings that you may like. I think maybe the most useful that a lot of people will like is that it contains sponsor block by default. And if you don't know what this is, you know all those YouTube videos that have some sponsor on them where they're trying to get you to download Raid Shadow Legends. Well, this will automatically skip all of those segments. And you can also download this as a browser extension, but just having it baked right into the website is a really nice touch. So if you watch something and somebody's trying to sell you on Raid Shadow Legends, it will automatically just skip past that part, which can be pretty useful. But besides that, it is pretty similar to Invidious. You can also create an account here and subscribe to your favorite YouTubers, same as the other one. So if I click feed, here's my subscriptions feed. Wow, I subscribe to myself, so egotistical. But I would give both of these a try and see which one you prefer more. Next up, let's go to Reddit. So I already showed you LibReddit, but you can do some things like subscribe to individual subreddits. So if I want to, I could subscribe here and you don't even have to create an account here and then just go back to the homepage. And instead of seeing all of the top most popular posts of all time, you now get a curated list of the specific subreddits you're subscribed to. And the only thing that you need to watch out for is that it is only saved locally. It is saved with a cookie. So if you move to a new computer and you want to keep all of your favorite subreddits, then you have to come in here and there is a link right here where you can import your settings and subscriptions into another browser. And there is another popular front end for Reddit called Tedit. And you might prefer the UI of this. This UI is kind of more similar to the old Reddit styling. And so, I don't know, maybe you like the UI better here. You can give this one a try, but it is basically the same. You can subscribe the same as you would with LibReddit. And you can view all the comments here as you would expect. So in this case, I think it is just up to whether you think that the UI here is better than the one that LibReddit has. It's kind of up to you, but there's not any major differences between this one and LibReddit. So give them both a try if you want to check out the preferences, see which one you prefer. They have a nice feature here where they can automatically replace YouTube links with links to Invidious or Piped. That might be useful to you. But let's move on to Knitter. And let's check out the tweets of everybody's favorite billionaire. And so you can now view all of the tweets here. It's not going to stop you and prompt you to sign up for Twitter. And you can even read all of the toxic comments on Twitter. Wow, awesome but you're not allowed to post any tweets, which is awesome because now you don't have to get caught up in the toxic conversations here. But sometimes you might want to read somebody's tweets, so that's where Knitter comes in. And if you want to follow somebody, there is no follow button here, but you have RSS feeds up here. So if you want to, you can put this URL into an RSS reader. It's just prompting me to download this. But if you right click and copy link here, then you can copy this to your favorite RSS reader and get all of the tweets here in real time. That is pretty useful. Or you can be like me and just manually check a Twitter feed every once in a while to see if they've posted anything interesting lately. So give this one a try if you wanna browse through somebody's Twitter feed. Next up, let's go over Google. Maybe you really like Google, but you don't like all the tracking that it does. Well, there is a front end called Google right here where you can search for something. I don't know, let's search for somebody else, not myself so I don't look like a massive narcissist. Let's search for Mental Outlaws channel and we can get it here 
And this is going to be the exact same result as Google, just in a different interface and without all the creepy tracking. So that's pretty cool. But I actually prefer this service called Cirx. And with Cirx, you also get Google results whenever you search, but you can also pull in results from any other different search engine. So for example, I have results from Google and Bing. And if you want to, you can add even more like Brave Search, Yahoo, all kinds of different websites. And you can scroll down here and check as many of these as you want to. So you can kind of aggregate all of the best results from all of the different search engines. And you might even get more unbiased search results because you probably know that just something like Google also censors and manipulates the search results. So you may like this because it actually brings in a whole bunch of different search engines if you want. And I actually do recommend this as a search engine. It is very good and I've been using it for a long time now. I'll probably even make another video on this in the future. That's how much I like it. But just for some basic searches, it is very good. The results are very accurate. And as you can see, you can even have it redirect to a privacy front end of YouTube. This one is going to Invidious, which is pretty cool. Next up, let's go over Google Translate. So Google Translate can be a very useful website that I used to use all the time, but you can get the exact same thing from something like Simply Translate or Lingva Translate. So Lingva Translate is only for Google Translate, but Simply Translate has a few different options here. If you want a different translation engine, you can. And then you can now translate here as you would expect. Uh, shout out to all the weebs that watch my channel. Let's translate this to Japanese. And we get Konnichiwa. You can also play the robot clip here if you want to see how it's pronounced. And see all the other information that Google would give you. That all makes sense. And this is a very good drop-in replacement for Google Translate without all of the privacy violations. Next up, we have IMDB. And the alternative for this is going to be LibreMD. So you can search for a movie right here, hit enter, go here, and you can now get all of the information that you want about your favorite movie without all of the tracking scripts and bloated user interface that IMDB has. So you can see the cast, you can see some reviews, that's pretty nice. I use IMDB every once in a while to find some good movies. So check this out. If you want a Quora replacement, then you can go to Qtray and you can find the same dumb questions that you would on Quora on Qtray. If you want an imager replacement, we have Rimgo because every once in a while you get a link to something on imager and maybe you don't want to have to go to that godforsaken website that loads a million and one scripts just to view a single image. It is really a useless website but this makes it a lot simpler. And that's all the websites that I wanted to show off. Those are probably the ones I use the most often, but there are even more that you may want to check out. So I'll leave a link to this as well. This is a giant list of alternative front ends, but they have all of the things I talked about today, like Invidious, Piped, and even some less popular ones that you may want to check out. And not only are these alternative front ends, like for your web browser, but they'll also have alternative apps so maybe you're on Android and you want to download an app of some of these, but of course you don't want to download the official app because it's probably going to track you and be super bloated. So you can check out this list. This is a very good list that I'll leave a link to in the description. But finally, you may want to check out LibRedirect. This is a browser extension that will automatically redirect you to all of these websites. So say you go to a YouTube URL, it will automatically redirect you to say Invidious. If you go to a Reddit URL, it will redirect you to your favorite instance. And this is probably the best redirector out there. And you can download it from, if you're on Firefox, then you can download it from the Firefox store, of course. If you are on Chromium, like any Chromium-based browser, like Google Chrome, Brave, something like that, then you will have to do this workaround in order to install it. That's just because with Chrome's new extension API, uh, they no longer have these kinds of extensions in their Chrome store. And so you do have to like manually come in here and save the file and then open it up in your extension manager, enable developer mode and install it that way. It's not a huge workaround, but you do have to do it. So that might be another reason to switch to Firefox. But anyway, once you have that installed, you can go up to the lib redirect icon and you can enable it for every website that you want. So maybe you want it for some websites, but not for others. And they really have an option for almost every website out there. If you click on settings, you can see they have a front end for almost every popular website out there. So even more that I didn't talk about in this video, like Genius, Urban Dictionary, 
Wikipedia, Stack Overflow. So there are a lot of options here. You probably don't want to enable all of these, but you can. And you can change the specific instance that you want. So let's say you want to use YouTube and you want to use Piped for your front end. And you can even pick your favorite instance here. And if you're not sure which one is the best, you can ping all of these and see which one is the fastest, at least where you are. And so you can ping all of these and see which one responds fastest and then add that one and see if it works best for you. So that can be pretty useful. But besides that, this can just do a whole lot. And once you enable a few of these and you go to say a Reddit link, and now you basically don't even have to think about it. Anytime you get a Reddit URL, it will automatically redirect to the privacy respecting front end of your choice. And I think this is a really great plugin if you want to check this out. There are other alternatives to this if for some reason you don't like this extension. This is at the bottom of the alternative front ends GitHub repository that I showed. But there's another one called Privacy Redirect. I don't really recommend this one because it hasn't been updated in a couple of years. And you can just use a basic redirector browser extension if you want. It's up to you however you want to implement this. Uh, probably the best one will be libredirect because it is actively being maintained and it just has so many options. So this was updated just last week. So it is in pretty good hands. And finally, you might be wondering, can you completely trust these front ends? Because essentially these are just hosted by random people on the internet. So if you go to someone's NVIDIA server, you aren't really 100% sure that they're not collecting any data about you in the background because it's not your web server. And so if you want absolutely the most privacy that you can get, you would have to host this yourself on your own web server, which you can definitely do. But for most practical use cases, this will of course be a major privacy upgrade compared to something like using YouTube or Reddit. And you don't really have to worry too much. But if you are worried, then there are some instances that even don't require JavaScript to be enabled. So, for example, NVIDIAS doesn't require you to enable JavaScript. And if no JavaScript is loading, then there's not really going to be any data collected about you. So I'm not sure if other projects don't require JavaScript, but you may want to check that out if you are a tinfoil hatter. Nothing wrong with that, of course. But finally, if you use one of these front ends a lot, then just donate to them. So at the bottom of most of these front ends, you'll have a link to where you can donate. Uh, it's probably blocked by my face, but just believe me that there is a donate link here because all of this is not free. So as you can see here, this instance gets 40 million requests and has to deal with two terabytes of bandwidth every single day. And so somebody has to pay for all of that. And if you are a big fan of one of these front ends and you have the resources, then go ahead and donate to them because I think they're doing a great service out here. Some of these front ends I only use once in a blue moon but some of them I use every single day. So do donate if you do have the means. And that's all there is to it. So now you have a way to browse your favorite websites without all of the creepy tracking. And if you're watching YouTube through one of these, you don't even get any ads. And so now you can watch all of my videos ad free. Trust me, I won't mind.